The Night of the Hunter is a fabulous film, the only movie ever directed by the astonishing Charles Lawton. It united an extraordinary constellation of talent, Stanley Cortez, who shot Orson Welles' The Magnificent Ambersons, critic and screenwriter James Agee, and a cast headed by Robert Mitchum, who's never been more seductive or more terrifying. Mitchum is the hunter, a psychopathic preacher who hates women and kills them for their money. He marries a rich widow, played with affecting fragility by Shelley Winters, and then pursues her runaway children through the back roads of Ohio. Mitchum's evil is balanced by Lillian Gish as a sort of guardian angel who radiates a goodness that is both luminous and powerful. A gothic fairy tale mixing reality and expressionism, The Night of the Hunter remains one of the most original films ever made. We celebrate its 40th birthday by telling the story of how Charles Lawton brought his remarkable vision to the screen. H-A-T-E. It was with this left hand that old brother Kane struck the blow that laid his brother low. L-O-V-E. You see these fingers, dear hearts, these fingers has veins that run straight to the soul of man. The right hand, friends, the hand of love. Now watch and I'll show you the story of life. These fingers, dear hearts, is always a warring and a tugging, one again to other. Now watch them. Old brother left hand. Left hand hates a fighting. And it looks like love's a goner. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hot dog loves a winning. Yes, sirree. It's love that won. And old left hand hate is down for the count. We took uh, a most unusual subject. And we took what we had to work with. And uh, Mr. Lawton uh, made a gem of it. Oh, God. We, were, we had a mutual appreciation society. We all knew we were involved in a great classic that was timeless. They never had a shout for silence. I have never worked with a director who really got performance out of people the way Charles did. A lot of directors, they couldn't direct you to the men's room. I shouldn't be negative about the other guys. I can only be positive about Charles, who was absolutely marvelous. Well, the birth of Night of the Hunter was very interesting. It came about through Harold Matson, who has uh, a literary agency in New York, and one of his clients was Davis Grubb, uh, who had written The Night of the Hunter. And uh, Harold sent me the galleys, and I was very impressed with it and thought it would make a fine picture, and I sent them to Charlie. Uh, he read them, and uh, immediately he wanted to play the, pe the preacher. Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men, loose, walking in the midst of the fire. When Charlie faced the fact that we wouldn't be able to get financed with him playing the preacher Powell, Lawton sent the galleys to Robert Mitchum. I was very much taken by uh, uh, Davis Grubb's writing and by his uh, delineation of the characters, you know, which was right on. When I read the novel, I, I was so impressed by the beautiful horror of the writing. He was a master at words, and it was like beauty and fear all together. And uh, Lawton got that. I said to him when we were sitting one night at, at my office, and, I, and he was, I wonder who in the hell we could get to direct this thing. And I said, Charlie, there's only one person that can direct it. And he looked at me, and he said, who's that? And I said, you, you big poop. And he said, me? And I said, yes. Uh, we stayed at my office till about one in the morning, and he was talking through this thing, and, and uh, uh, he was talking like Cecil B. DeMille, like he directed pictures all his life, you know what I mean? The original script was done by James Agee, and uh, I saw it, I, I read it, actually, I held it in my hands. It was uh, at least 250 pages long. Extraordinarily long, detailed script. I think it was probably a masterpiece, but it wasn't a film script. No, Jim Agee was uh, sleeping on a couch in my den, and he turned in a script that looked like a WPA project. 
goddamn thing must have weighed 18 pounds, you know. And then my understanding from Lawton was that he went back to the book, which is a very, very cinematic book. It's one of those books that you almost tear the pages out, paste it in a notebook and shoot. And he went back to the original book and, and wrote the screenplay. Charles really is responsible for the script. Look at here. You know what that is? Want to see something cute? Now, looky. How about that? This is what I use on meddlers. John might be a meddler. Ah, no, no. No, little lamb, don't touch it. Now, don't touch my knife. That makes me mad. Makes me very, very mad. Now, just tell me. Where's the money hid? But that's why I promised John I would have tell. John doesn't matter! Can I get that through your head, you poor, silly, disgusting little wretch? It was an unusual part, and I was very grateful for it. It, uh, you know, gave me a little exercise. I, I uh, took me off, uh, you know, uh, smiling and kissing the horse at the end, you know. And uh, I knew the character fairly well, having grown up and rambled around in that territory, you know, when I was a kid. Yeah, I made uh, several trips out here on freight trains, you know. Bummed all through that country. Charles Lawton was a very smart man. He knew the metier, is that what you call it, that the actor was the most secure in. And he knew I was uh, from the actor's studio, and uh, he directed me in terms of like Stanislavski would have directed me, you know, with inner meanings and what I wanted and what the character wanted and what the character was trying to do. I had an image of her like a fly fascinated by a spider and she very willingly walks into this web and Lawton was very pleased with that and he said let's try to get that in the performance Harry I was praying oh, I'm sorry I didn't know I I thought you thought well that the moment you walked in that door I'd start to paw on you and that'll abominable way that men are supposed to do on their wedding night. Ain't that right now? No, no, no. I think it's time we made one thing perfectly clear, Willa. Marriage to me represents a blending of two spirits in the sight of heaven. Charles had such great respect as an actor, and this was his first directorial thing. And we, we all wanted to help him. And uh, he was wonderful. He would make everybody feel they were included. I thought it was wonderful he was coming to direct. And of course, all of us wanted to help any way we could. And I remember coming to him with some idea of, of a scene. And he said, oh, I'm not doing it right. You don't think what I'm doing is, is the right thing? Well, I certainly did, but I, I just thought this would imp help it a little. And everyone else found that they had the same reaction from him. And we stopped giving ideas and just said everything was perfect because he was so unsure of himself. What's wrong, John? Come to me, boy. What's wrong, John? Didn't you hear me, boy? John, when your dad says come, you should mind him. He ain't my dad. No, and he ain't no preacher, neither. Someone said they would work for Griffith for sandwiches, and you felt that about Mr. Lawton. Before we started shooting the picture, Charles Lawton looked at every picture D.W. Griffith ever made, not once, but several times. And he learned evidently quite a bit about technique from D.W. Griffith. Children. There's a, a long shot outside, and it moves in. Well, that was called in the olden days an iris shot. And that, I'm sure, he got from D.W. Griffith. One th very surprising thing in seeing these original nitrate prints, everything was, like, incredibly sharp. So what Lawton wanted was, you know, that sharpness. He wanted sharpness of detail. That meant that he didn't shoot on cloudy days. Also, the second unit he saw as, uh, through the children's eyes, more innocent, more bright, more beautiful, more pretty, was his words. 
And uh, I guess he wanted to contrast the second unit with the first unit, which maybe was darker and more melodramatic. I know it sounds corny, it sounds a little bit hammy, but these are the things that, that you're dealing with. Uh, good versus evil, light versus shade. Uh, you, you're dealing all the time with light and shadow, light and shade. Are you through praying? I'm through Harry. You were listening outside the parlor window. It ain't in the river, is it, Harry? Answer me. Ben never told you he'd throw it in the river, did he? Around her head is this strange light, which I tried to, to tip off, so to speak, the audience, that death is imminent. We did think with lighting in there that, that ties into the audience, which doesn't happen very often. I don't remember exactly how much description was in the script about it, but uh, being an architect, I, I think architectural things are very interesting to the camera. And this whole thing up there was, turned out pretty good. Now, all that stuff on the river, you know, where they're swirling down the river, that's all on the stage. We didn't have any river outside at all. That was all on the stage. And the two kids up in the haymow, you know. And they hear out in the night, leaning, leaning. They look out, and they see across the horizon the preacher riding. That was done on the stage on the sound stage with a midget and a midget pony. Don't never sleep. Charles Lawton would get a book and he'd say, well, now, this is the Bible, and I want to read you a passage from so-and-so, so-and-so. This is the essence of what we want to have in this scene. You know, the whole thing of what the scene was going to be about besides what was written. What a blessedness. What a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all alarms. When the picture was over, I ran the picture for one of the executives of United Artists. And he was through, and the guy said, it's too arty. And Lawton gave him an hour's lecture on art. <laughs> Night of the Hunter was voted one of the 10 best pictures of the year. But absolutely no money was spent on promotion of it at all. It was a matter of salesmanship. It was a matter of taking the film under your arm and going out and selling it. And it could have been done. They didn't have the muscle, the desire, or, or, or the intelligence to, to handle the picture. For the 50s, it was a kind of, you know, kind of film that was daring to make from a commercial standpoint, and it proved to be so. It was not a commercial success. Knowing Charles Lawton the way I did, I can tell you, it most definitely had an emotional effect on him. He did take it into himself. You see, he did, because that was Charles' nature. Charles uh, took even great successes that he had, he doubted. The most interesting thing to me was how his spirit was crushed. I mean, he never made another film as a director. That was the tragedy, that was the sadness, I think, of, of that movie for me. And you can see The Night of the Hunter later tonight on BBC Two.